KK Mon founder apologizes to King and Muslims for socks controversy. 7.4 magnitude quake hits Taiwan, strongest in 25 years. Salam Malaysia Madani. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Mohammed Amin Carlos, and you're watching Malaysia Tonight. His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim, King of Malaysia, today granted an audience to Dato Sri Chai Ki Khan, the founder and executive chairman of the KK Mart Group, which has been involved in the Allah socks controversy. Well, during the 15-minute meeting at Istana Negara, Dato Sri Chai, popularly known as KK Chai, apologized to Sultan Ibrahim for the controversy caused by the sales of the offending socks last month. Well, in a post on Sultan Ibrahim's official social media, Dato Sri Chai asked for forgiveness from His Majesty as well as all Muslims regarding the issue of selling socks with the word Allah printed on them at the KK Supermart outlets. Well, the king decreed for all parties, including KK Mart, to be more careful about the products sold in their outlets. He said this especially includes imported goods to prevent such incidents from occurring again. Sultan Ibrahim also reminded all parties against taking advantage of the situation that was triggered by the Allah socks issue. The controversy involving the KK Supermart started on 13th March when images of socks sold at one of the convenience store chain's outlets with the word Allah were circulated on social media. Well, that was Rich I was last week charged under Section 298 of the Penal Code for deliberate intent to wound the religious feelings of others alongside his wife. Both claimed trial. The Communications Ministry and the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, or MCMC, along with several other agencies, will hold a meeting with Meta Platform Provider on Monday to discuss online safety aspects. Communications Minister Fahmi Fadil said among the issues to be raised in the meeting are actions by certain parties abusing Meta Platforms, such as Facebook, to distort facts and spread fake news. Sejak daripada semalam, kementerian ini telah mendapati ada siri message yang tersusun, a coordinated messaging operation ya, satu tindakan yang telah dimulakan oleh beberapa watak, beberapa pihak dalam khususnya platform media sosial Facebook yang membuat tuduhan yang dangkal dan jahat, menuduh bahawa Tahun ini tidak ada majlis tilawah Al-Quran peringkat kebangsaan ataupun antarabangsa. Saya telah mengarahkan PIMCMC untuk meneliti mengenal pasti semua yang terlibat bersekongkol dalam operasi uh, influence operation ini dan kita akan ambil beberapa tindakan yang bersesuaian dan tegas memandangkan ada pihak-pihak tertentu yang cuba memesong fakta yang sebenarnya sangat mudah untuk kita sahkan. Furthermore, Fahmi said they will also raise the issue of underage children below 13 years old opening social media accounts on certain platforms. According to Fahmi, if Meta refuses to cooperate, the ministry will take several actions against the platform provider and colluding parties. Well, Spanko Sundar and Berhad Chairman Tan Sri Robert Tan Hua Chun was charged in the Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court today with cheating the Finance Ministry to award his company a contract worth 3.9 billion ringgit to manage the government's vehicle fleet. Now, Tan Sri Robert, 83, pleaded not guilty after the charge was read out to him before Judge Susanna Hussein. Well, Tan Sri Robert is accused of deceiving the Finance Ministry by misleading the Tender Opening Committee to award the supply, repair, maintenance and management of government of Malaysia vehicle fleet to Spanco. The charge under Section 420 of the Penal Code provides for imprisonment of up to 10 years with whipping and a fine upon conviction. Susanna allowed Tan Sri Robert bail of 2 million ringgit in one surety on condition that he did not interfere with witnesses and reported himself to the MACC office once every two months. And the court set forth June for mention of the case. 
Well, the Selangor government is ready to share data collected through the Sri Lanka application for cross-checking and updating the information of people of the state in the central database hub known as Padu system. Now, Menteri Besar, Datu Sri Amiruddin Shari said that over 3.712 million records from 66,216 subsidy recipients in the application owned by Sri Lanka Ventures, Cindy Ranburhad, which is a state government subsidiary, can be shared with Padu subject to the terms and conditions of use. Well, he said that the data that will be shared includes information about recipients of state government aid schemes. Sebagai langkah permulaan, kerajaan negeri bersedia untuk berkongsi data yang dikumpul dan diperoleh oleh aplikasi selangkah yang dimiliki oleh selangkah venture iaitu anak syarikat kerajaan negeri. Data ini merangkumi maklumat penerima skim bantuan bagi program bingkas kita 30,000 orang, asas, mental sehat, saring dan mama kerja. He said this after witnessing the signing ceremony of a Memorandum of Understanding or MOU between the Sri Lanka application and PADU at the Sultan Salahuddin Abdul Aziz Shah building today. The Sri Lanka application currently has approximately 3.87 million active users, including those who do not receive subsidies and assistance from the Selango government. In the business segment, Malaysia to showcase real expertise and capabilities in German trade fair. The Malaysian Indian Transformation Unit, or MITRA, will be returned to the Prime Minister's Department, or JPM, from the National Unity Ministry. Communications Minister Fahmi Fadil, who is also the Unity Government Spokesman, said the matter was agreed upon by Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim and National Unity Minister Datuk Iran Agudagang at the Cabinet meeting today. Dalam Jumaat Menteri hari ini juga telah memutuskan bahawa uh, agensi yang dinamakan sebagai Mitra telah diputuskan akan dikembalikan ke uh, Jabatan Perdana Menteri. Ini telah diputuskan dalam mesyuarat hari ini dan mengenai penguatkuasaan bilakah ia akan dipindahkan, kita boleh rujuk dengan pihak Mitra nanti. On Mitra's new direction, Fahmi said it would also be announced by Mitra. Tapi sudah pasti dengan pulangnya Mitra ke Jabatan Perdana Menteri, maka fokus khusus oleh yang amat-amat Perdana Menteri akan diberikan untuk pastikan bukan hanya mitra sebagai sebuah badan dapat diurus dengan baik tapi matlamatnya juga sama ada dapat dicapai atau diharapkan dapat dikembang luas. On 27 March, Deputy Minister of Entrepreneur Development and Cooperatives Dato R Ramanan called for Mitra to be placed back under JPM after taking into account the views of various parties, especially the Indian community who believe that Mitra as an asset, an arm of the Indian community is more comfortable being within the Prime Minister's purview. Well, meanwhile, the National Entrepreneurial Group Economic Fund, or Turku National, today announced an additional allocation of 30 million ringgit for the Indian Community Entrepreneur Development Scheme, known as SPUMI Initiative, dubbed SPUMI Goes Big, to empower India entrepreneurs. Now, Deputy Minister of Entrepreneur Development and Cooperatives, Dato R. Ramanan, said the additional allocation brings the total allocation for Indian entrepreneurs to 60 million ringgit. He said the scheme offering financing from 50,000 ringgit to 100,000 ringgit is open to all existing SPUMI entrepreneurs who had registered with the Inland Revenue Board, the LHDN. Sebelum ni, kalau kita ambil SPUMI, SPUMI pinjaman dia adalah daripada 1,000 sehingga 100,000. Peminjam boleh meminjam dari 1,000 sehingga 100,000. Tetapi SPUMI goes big ni, dia adalah pinjaman 50,000 hingga 100,000. 
Met by reporters today, he said among the sectors eligible for the scheme are small contractors, agriculture and agro-based enterprises, retail, services, manufacturing and online businesses. Dato Ramanan said entrepreneurs can apply for Spumi, Goes Big Financing at all Teco national branches starting 15 April. The initiative, he said, is expected to benefit more than 2,000 entrepreneurs. Meanwhile, Ramanan said that until last March, a total of 28,808 Indian entrepreneurs had received financing under Spumi with a value of 450.5 million ringgit. Malaysia's latest innovations, expertise and capabilities in the rail industry will be showcased at the InnoTrans 2024, which is the leading trade fair for transport technology in Germany this September, according to Malaysia External Trade Development Corporation of Martrade in a release statement today. Well, Martrade's Deputy Chief Executive Officer for Export Acceleration, Abu Bakar Yusuf, said the agency will demonstrate its commitment to driving technological advancements and sustainable solutions in the global rail sector by sending a delegation that includes key players in the industry, government agencies and trade associations. Therefore, he noted that Martrade, as organizer of Malaysia's participation in the event, invites Malaysian companies and related organizations in the real industry to join the Malaysian Pavilion at InnoTrans 2024. Overall, Malaysia's global trade in the rail sector continued its upward trend in 2023 with a 14.3% increase to reach 1.3 billion ringgit. Malaysia in real exports globally total 547.2 million ringgit in 2023 the top five destinations being singapore china taiwan the united states and hong kong major exports include cargo containers rolling stock railway parts and signaling devices the biannual InnoTrans 2024 from the 24th to the 27th of September in Berlin is expected to bring together industry leaders, innovators and stakeholders to explore the latest trends and developments in rail transport. The local iron and steel industry is facing major challenges resulting from the lack of activities in China's construction sector. So to address this challenge, Deputy Investment, Trade and Industry Minister Liu Chintong said the government implemented two important decisions. One of which is a two-year moratorium to allow for reassessments to address the challenges faced by the local iron and steel industry. Moratorium untuk uh, sepanjang dua tahun. Moratorium ini memberikan ruang untuk pemain industri tempatan supaya menyelaras dan juga membina semula supaya mereka boleh menghadapi cabaran yang akan datang. Cabaran yang akan datang termasuk over capacity di sedunia. Cabaran juga termasuk uh, keadaan carbon kerana bukan saja di Malaysia tetapi di seluruh dunia uh, isu carbon uh, ataupun uh, isu carbon emission akan diambil kira setiap kali uh, apa ni pemain industri meminta uh, pinjaman bank okay? ini adalah uh, cabaran yang sangat uh, penting dan juga dekat dan uh, moratorium ini akan membantu syarikat-syarikat dan industri pemain atau pemain tempatan untuk mencari jalan keluar. According to Liu, the establishment of an independent and special committee for the iron and steel industry to assess the sector can give it a new lease of life. Well, the Ministry of Defence is in the midst of completing the policy paper to strengthen the country's defence industry and explore new areas in defence, including cyber security. Deputy Defence Minister Ali Zahari said this is because the country's defence industry is largely involved in MRU, which stands for maintenance, repair and overhaul, rather than manufacturing. Sebenarnya kita punya kepakaran tempatan, tapi dalam masa yang sama kita juga melihat bagaimana kepakaran tempatan kita, industri-industri yang sedia ada itu dapat bertahan dan juga bersaing pada masa depan. Sebab itu dua aspek ini kita lihat. Yang sedia ada harus kita perkukuhkan dan dalam masa yang sama kita juga melihat industri-industri baru termasuk dalam bidang cyber juga. Adli was replying to Senator Dato Dr Dominic Lau Ho Chai who wanted to know about the government's efforts to boost the defence industry. Apart from that, Adli said the ministry is also working on improving existing memoranda of understanding for the procurement of national defence assets. 
Malaysia Airlines and Indigo, an airline from India, have inked a memorandum of understanding or MOU for a code share partnership and mutual cooperation agreement. In a statement today, Malaysia Aviation Group or MAG said the agreement would enable both carriers to provide customers with more options and flexibility for seamless travels between Malaysia and India. While it said Malaysia Airlines will be able to strengthen its connectivity into India as a marketing carrier on Indigo operated flights while Indigo customers will get to explore more Southeast Asian destinations through Malaysia Airlines extensive network. MEG Group Managing Director Dato Captain Isham Ismail said the collaboration underscores the group's ongoing commitment to providing diverse travel options and flexibility to this growing aviation market with a primary focus on enhancing the customer journey. Meanwhile, Indigo Chief Executive Officer Peter Albez said this code share was in line with the carrier's vision to provide access to an unparalleled network while delivering on the promise of providing on-time, affordable, courteous and hassle-free travel experiences. Currently, Malaysia Airlines operates 71 weekly flights to nine key hubs in India, including New Delhi, Mumbai, Bengaluru, Chennai, Hyderabad, Kochi, Ahmedabad, Amritsar, and Trivandrum. The establishment of the Faculty of Artificial Intelligence, or AI, at University Technology Malaysia, UTM, is expected to be launched by Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim on 3rd of May. Deputy High Education Minister Dato Mustafa Sakmud said the government had allocated 20 million ringgit for the establishment of the faculty in line with the development of technology, including AI. Buat masa ini, uh, MOF telah memberi peruntukan awal lah, dan fakulti tersebut sedang di, uh, diperbaiki, uh, diubah suai dan kita sedang uh, membeli peralatan-peralatan yang uh, berkaitan untuk uh, fakulti ini dan mengikut uh, maklumat yang terkini, insya Allah uh, fakulti ini akan dirasmikan uh, oleh yang amat merupakan Perdana Menteri pada 3 Mei uh, pada tahun ini. He was also asked if there was an impact on existing courses at higher education institutions due to the development of AI and measures taken by the ministry. Kementerian lah, dinding ganting ini kita akan menilai ya fakulti-fakulti kita ini dari indikatornya tentang keboleh pasaran graduannya. Bila keboleh pasaran graduannya di bawah 30%, memang fakulti tersebut terpaksa di uh, sama ada diberhentikan atau diubah sesuai supaya mengikuti, mengikuti uh, keperluan in, industri dan kita akan pastikan bahawa pelajar-pelajar kita di semua fakulti ini akan dapat uh, mengikuti kursus-kursus dan didedahkan dengan teknologi-teknologi baru terutama artificial intelligence ini. Coming up, six children dead, 14 injured in Iraq road accident. Well, at least nine people were killed and more than 700 injured by a powerful earthquake in Taiwan that damaged dozens of buildings and prompted tsunami warnings that extended to Japan and the Philippines before being lifted. Officials said the quake was the strongest to shake the island in decades and warned of more tremors in the days ahead. The quake was the strongest since a 7.6 magnitude struck in September 1999, killing around 2,400 people in the deadliest natural disaster in the island's history. Today's magnitude 7.4 quake hit just before 8 a.m. local time, with the United States Geological Survey putting the epicenter 18 kilometers south of Taiwan's Hualien City at a depth of 34.8 kilometers. The National Fire Agency said all the deaths occurred in Hualien County and that so far 736 people had been injured in the quake without specifying how seriously. President Tsai Ing-wen called for local and central government agencies to coordinate with each other and said that the military would also be providing support. <laughs>
Across the Taiwan Strait, ceiling lights shook and school children were evacuated from buildings in China's eastern Zhejiang province. Residents of Hong Kong also reported feeling the earthquake. People in Japan's southwestern Okinawa prefecture fled to higher ground after an earthquake in Taiwan sparked tsunami warnings. Video from the region's largest city, Naha, showed crowds climbing upstairs to avoid an expected three-meter-high tsunami. Well, in the end, smaller waves of 30 centimeters were measured in locations including Ishigaki Island, located approximately 300 kilometers east of Taiwan. Meanwhile, no Malaysians have reportedly been affected by the powerful earthquake that struck Taiwan. Foreign Ministry, the Wisma Putra, said through the Malaysian Friendship and Trade Center in Taipei, it is closely monitoring this situation. The Malaysian Friendship and Trade Center in Taipei is actively coordinating efforts with local authorities to obtain further information. Wisma Putra said Malaysians in the affected areas are urged to stay vigilant and follow the latest updates and guidance provided by the local authorities. Well, six primary school students were killed and 14 others were injured when a refrigerator truck veered into a group of children in the southern Iraqi city of Basra. The police and witnesses said the driver lost control after the truck's brakes failed and plowed into a group of students from a nearby primary school who were walking on the roadside in the town of Hartha on the northern outskirts of Basra. Director General of Basra Health Department Abbas Al-Tamimi told Reuters from al fahia Hospital that the wounded will be receiving treatment at different hospitals in Basra. Hospital sources said some of the wounded children are in critical condition with severe head injuries. Iraqi Prime Minister Mohammad Shia al-Sudani ordered an immediate investigation into the fatal accident. Coming up in sports, weightlifter Anik books a ticket to Paris Olympics. Well, Singapore today joined Malaysia in ruling out, hosting the 2026 Commonwealth Games, further plunging the future of the multi-sport event into doubt. Now, the Commonwealth Games Federation, CGF, has been scrambling to find a new host after the Australian state of Victoria withdrew last year because of soaring costs. Well, in a joint statement, the Commonwealth Games Singapore and Sports Singapore said they have studied the feasibility of hosting the 2026 Commonwealth Games and have decided not to make any bid to host the Games. Well, the two sports bodies, however, giving no more detail. Victoria's sudden pullout and the lack of an Obvious alternative have raised doubts over the future of the Games, which takes place every four years, with most of the competing teams drawn from former British colonies. Well, the Games were last hosted in 2022 by the city of Birmingham in England. National weightlifter Mohamed Anik Kazdan is the sixth Malaysian to qualify to the 2024 Olympic Games in Paris after finishing eighth in the men's 61-kilogram event at the International Weightlifting Federation, or IWF, World Cup in Phuket, Thailand. The 21-year-old managed to lift a total of 290 kilograms, 125 kgs to place 13 for the snatch and 165 kgs for the clean and jerk to place six. Mohamed Anik remains eighth on the Olympic qualifying ranking with a total lift of 296 kgs, which is the national record set during the International Weightlifting Championship in Qatar last December. While well, only the top 10 ranked athletes in the Olympic qualifiers automatically qualify for the 2024 Paris Olympics, scheduled to take place from 26 July to 11th August. Fellow Malaysian Mohamed Aznil Bedin could only manage a 10th place finish with a total lift of 284 kgs, while China's Lee Fabin emerges champion with a total lift of 312, followed by North Korean Park Myon Jin, who took the silver with a lift of 301 kgs, and Siniza John of the Philippines but took the bronze with a total lift of 300 kgs. And on to football. Well, Tottenham Hotspur missed the chance to move into the top four of the Premier League when they were held to a one-all draw at West Ham United after Brennan Johnson's early strike was cancelled out by Kurt Zoma in their clash early this morning. 
Posse Koglu's side looked up for the battle in East London and went in front after five minutes through Johnson, who scored from close range when he connected with a low cross from Timo Werner following a slick counter-attack down the left. Spurs looked dangerous on the break after the goal, with Pedro Boro fizzing a shot just wide and captain Son Hyun Min having a left foot curler saved before West Ham equalized. Zuma rose amongst a crowd of players in the six-yard box and managed to steer the ball into the net off his back from a Jared Bowen corner in the 19th minute with Tottenham defence and goalkeeper Giorgileamo Vicario failing to snuff out the danger. The result left Spurs in fifth place on 57 points, two points and one spot behind Aston Villa, who have also played 30 games and visit Manchester City tonight. West Ham remain in seventh place in the standings with 45 points from 31 games. Meanwhile, Dominic Calvert-Lewin ended a 23-game goal drought when he scored a late penalty to give struggling Everton a one-all Premier League draw at Newcastle United, who will rue several missed opportunities in a match they largely dominated. Everton were desperately poor in the first half, but improved with the introduction of James Garner and Andre Hamez. The bench to take some control in midfield, where they had been overrun by their host following Alexander Isak's opener. They were awarded the spot game when Ashley Young was hauled to the floor by Newcastle defender Paul Dummett, who had only just come on to the pitch and Calvin Lewin netted his first goal since October. Everton say in 16th place with 26 points from 30 games, four points above the relegation zone, while Newcastle are in eighth with 44 points also from 30 games. Elsewhere, Bournemouth gave themselves an outside chance of qualifying for Europe with a 1-0 home victory over Crystal Palace that left the visitors still looking over their shoulders. While Palace should stay out of trouble, Bournemouth can already start planning for another top-flight campaign after moving to 41 points and it could get even better. The scrappy Premier League game not held by heavy rain was decided in the 80th minute by Justin Kluivert, who finished well after good work by fellow substitute Antoine Semenyo. Victory lifted Bournemouth above Chelsea into 11th place, just four points behind 7th place West Ham United. Well, after a fourth league game without a win, Palace are in 14th place with 30 points, eight ahead of 18th place, Luton Town. Well, that concludes this edition of Malaysia Tonight. In our top story, KK Mart founder apologizes to King and Muslims for Sot's controversy. Till then, I'm Mohammed Amin Carlos. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Thanks for watching. RTM, Tuman Setia Anta.